Hello friends. Welcome to Gainers Biochemistry. So in this session we are going to see about genomics and uh, proteomics. One of the important area of uh, genetics and bioinformatics. So we are going to see about genome maps and the different types of genome maps here. So in the background you can see a picture. It is the three important life critical molecules present in the living systems. One is DNA, the third one is RNA, third one is protein. All the three are important in central dogma. So what is this central dogma of molecular biology? It is having uh, the combination of all the three molecules DNA, RNA and protein. DNA uh, can be duplicated into another copy. It is called a DNA replication. So DNA can replicate. Then the information present in the DNA can be taken uh, to RNA and uh, it is called uh, transcription where information coded in the sequence of base pairs in the DNA molecule is passed to molecules of RNA. Then uh, the information uh, which is there in RNA can be converted into protein molecule. This is called a translation where information present in the RNA is passed on to proteins. It never passes from proteins to nucleic acids. That is you see that uh, uh, protein to uh, nucleic acids uh, coming back is not possible. Only forward reaction from RNA to protein is possible. So all these three uh, critical molecules DNA, RNA and protein are involved in settled dogma of any form of uh, living system. We are going to uh, see about genome maps with this uh, central dogma background. So what is this genome map or genetic map? It is a map that shows the relative location of two genetic traits, related or closely related traits. The way to do this is to use the offspring, offspring is F1, F2 generations of an organism and track how many times two given genetic traits are inherited together. They are inherited from one generation to another generation. For example, hair color and eye color, both are inherited. There are two general types of genome mapping. One is called genetic mapping, the other one is physical mapping. Both types of genome mapping, actually they, they, these two mappings are going to help or guide the scientist towards the location of a particular gene or the section of a DNA called a gene on a chromosome. However, they rely on very different information. And if you go for positional cloning and uh, gene mapping, we are having a lot of strategies. So we have general mapping strategies. One is called genetic mapping, other one is called physical mapping. Then we have RFLP, restriction fragment length polymorphism linkage analysis. In that we have RFLPs linked to disease genes, then predictive value of linked RFLPs. Then gene isolation with linked RFLPs where we have chromosome walking, then uh, criteria uh, for uh, identifying a gene then physical mapping this is uh, physical mapping of a particular gene where we have cytogenetic analysis fluorescence in situ hybridization technique is there FISH fish is there so we have general mapping strategies like uh, genetic mapping what is the definition of genetic mapping by definition the ordering of the genes on a particular chromosome or chromosomes according to recombination frequency so here genetic mapping may sometimes be required first before probes can be found to use in physical mapping then physical mapping by definition says that determination of physical distances between the genes uh, adjacent genes in, in base pairs of DNA that is the distance using cytogenetic analysis and molecular techniques. Physical mapping is used to ultimately pinpoint or exactly locate the gene of interest. So if you take a human genome, 
mapping the human genome uh, can be done by uh, all the three genetic mapping physical mapping and dna sequencing method so we have classical genetic uh, linkage studies so genetic linkage mapping it involves determining the statistical association of specific traits with genetic markers on chromosomes using pedigrees and crosses so for that we have uh, uh, several uh, methods used so we use recombination frequencies to determine relative distances between marker genes on a chromosome then genome wide association studies called the GWAS is there then humans require 24 different maps one of one one for each of the 22 autosomes and one each for x and y chromosomes then marker alleles are used to determine the rate of recombination example crossing over is there between the linked genes so linked means on the same chromosome or, the, or, the, or on the same genome so the unit which is used or, uh, or measured for each linkage map is recombination frequency that is nothing but recombinants divided by total progeny the report this is reported as map units mu or centi morgans cm different types of markers they are used in genetic mapping so genes uh, can be used as genetic markers but they are not ideal choices because they occur frequently example uh, every 100 uh, kilo base pairs in human genome we, we have a uh, marker so greater marker density it is usually required uh, for identifying the genes so three major types of markers are used here one is RFLP restriction fragment polymorphisms this is actually substitution at a restriction site where in the restriction site uh, restriction endonucleases are going to cut the DNA molecule then STR start short uh, very short or short tandem repeats STR otherwise called microsatellites then SNP single nucleotide polymorphisms then STS the sequence tagged sites so genome wide mapping uh, can be done uh, here you see that the high density genetic mapping it was first revolutionized in the year 1980s by the discovery of abundant polymorphic genetic markers like uh, macro satellites and micro satellites then research teams they collaborated and they added to a common database then in the year 1994 human genetic map it had uh, localized uh, almost 5264 microsatellites to uh, 2335 chromosome loci so the, now it's the average density of one marker uh, for every 599 kilo base pass so in this process thousands of uh, sequence tagged site that is STS were identified STS that is nothing but a uh, couple hundred base pairs of known sequence Two types of physical mapping, um, physical maps useful for uh, sequencing a genome. One is called low, res low resolution maps. They are cytogenetic uh, or FIS, FIS sketch maps. They are, they, they are uh, actually chromosomes can be signed with some dyes. So stained chromosomes, they produce uh, banding patterns composed of bands that average 6 uh, MP. Then regions are designated by their position relative to the centi centromia, uh, which is there at the center of the chromosome. Q is equal to long arm and the P, which indicates short arm, numbered from the cent centromere starting with the number 1. So genes and other sequences are localized to chromosome maps with probes and by using a technique called fluorescence in situ hybridization FI, a sketch fish. Various types of radioactive uh, probes, radioactive isotope probes and stains also can be used to mark specific regions of chromosomes. Then it provides a physical map of the overall structure of each chromosome or the region of the chromosome. Two types of, uh, types of physical maps you very very useful for sequencing a genome. Uh, uh, the second one is called a high resolution map, OAC or BAC clone quantic maps. So mechanically, uh, shear or partially digest uh, genomic DNA with uh, restriction enzymes and uh, clone large uh, 200 to 500 kilobase 
where uh, you see that uh, kilo bases overlapping fragments to yolks or BACs. So an entire genome or single chromosome can be represented in a yolk or by BAC clone library. It depends on uh, the starting point where the gene starts. Then overlapping YAC or BAC clones can be assembled into a scaffold without sequencing by DNA fingerprinting using markers like micro satellites. So BAC vectors with a capacity of 300 KB and ability to replicate in uh, a, a bacterium called E. coli, Escherichia coli, that have become popular for genome sequencing. Uh, now we see that routinely sequenced using the shotgun method. Sequencing the human genome, here we have two major players. One is called uh, SGP, other one is called uh, CRA. What is SGP? Human Genome Project, publicly funded international consortium like NIH, DO, etc. Then Francis Collins, National Human Genome Research Institute, NHGRI. Then Began in the US in 1990, uh, they started with a goal of 15 years. Then genetic and physical mapping approach and diet deoxy sequencing was done. Then Celera Genomics Corporation, CRA, they did it. They had a spin off of applied bio systems ABI. Then J. Craig went our CEO. Then they created uh, this uh, uh, in the year 1998 with a goal of three years, direct shotgun method and uh, diet deoxy sequencing along with HGP's maps for validation is done. Both groups collected blood and serum uh, uh, and uh, sperm samples from uh, anonymous male and female donors of different ethnic backgrounds. So for identifying genes in the DNA sequences, we have to do first step that is called annotation step. Uh, that is uh, nothing but uh, identification and description of putative genes and other important sequences. The second one is called ORFs, open reading frames. So this ORF is nothing but potential protein coding sequence that begins with a start codon and ends with a stop codon. So all ORFs uh, come in all sizes. So not all ORFs uh, they encode uh, proteins. Six to seven percentage uh, uh, they will not code uh, for protein uh, uh, that is done in yeast. Then ORFs with uh, introns that is called intervening sequences can require sophisticated computer algorithms to detect it. Then sequencing the human genome. Two major players we have uh, the uh, HGP and CRE as I mentioned uh, earlier. And uh, identifying the genes, we are having uh, annotation step first, then war of second. Then uh, in HGP, we have got milestones. In the picture, you can see the former pre president of uh, USA, Bill Clinton. So, the year uh, 2000 was uh, the milestone where uh, the work was completed on HGP. So, 26th June 2000, uh, where you see that uh, in the White House uh, press conference, the former president of uh, USA, Bill Clinton, uh, met the press regarding this HGP. So HGP started in the year 1990. Approximately 22.1 billion nucleotides of sequence uh, data were sequenced. Sevenfold coverage was done. Unfinished. Uh, that is 24 percent were completed, completely finished. 50 percent near to finished. Now it is finished. Then Celera, they started in the year 1998, approximately 14.5 billion nucleotide subsequence data were sequenced, 4.6 fold coverage was done, complete assembled genome with 99% coverage was done. So the first assembled draft of a human genome that was uh, simultaneously published in a scientific journal Nature and Science on 15th and 16th February 2001.